Hello, this is Daniel Chiro. I'm back again with another lesson. This time we'll be able to look at uh, how we can observe plant cells under a compound light microscope. Uh, before we go further, uh, I want to remind you that if you are watching me from the YouTube channel uh, and you have not subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button so that uh, each time I upload new videos, you can receive notification. So to begin with, I, I want to take you through uh, what you need to have in terms of material and apparatus uh, for you to be able to examine uh, the cells under a microscope. These cells are actually plant cells and these plant cells, uh, our specimen today, we are going to use the uh, onion scaly leaf. So we're going to extract our specimen from an onion scaly leaf so that we observe the onion cells. So let me now take you through the materials and apparatus which you need to have for you to be able to prepare uh, a specimen which you are going to observe under a light compound microscope. So first of all, uh, the most important uh, apparatus that you need to have, you need to have a microscope, a light compound microscope which you are able to see here so that is one uh, apparatus that you need to have the next one you need to have uh, what you will be able to use to cut which is a scalpel so you need a scalpel if you do not have a scalpel a knife can still be used or a razor blade can still be used you also need a tweezer or forceps if you do not have a tweezer or forceps, your fingers can still do the job. Uh, I'll show you how you can do that uh, as, we, as I take you through the procedure of how to prepare the specimen. Then you also need a solution, iodine solution, which you are going to use to stain the cells so that they become more visible under a light microscope. You also need water. Uh, because what we are preparing is a wet mount, so water is going to be used. Wet mount because we are using a liquid, and one of the liquids is water. The other liquid is iodine solution, which I showed you earlier. So we call it a wet mount because a liquid is being used in the preparation of a specimen. You also need a glass slide on which the specimen uh, will be placed for us to be able to view under a microscope. You also need a cover slip, uh, which is a simply a small piece of glass, which we normally use to cover the, uh, the specimen uh, when it has been placed on the specimen slide. Then you also need a paper towel. A small piece is enough because we are going to use it to dry the liquid that we are going to place on the specimen slide. Then. You also need the specimen itself, which is simply a scaly leaf from the onion bulb. So this scaly leaf is actually obtained from the onion bulb. Then besides that, you may also need a white towel. You need a white tile. This white tile, we are going to use it to place our specimen. And also when we'll be doing the cutting, it is placed on the, space, on the white tile so that it, we can get the right size of the specimen. So from here, now, I'll take you through the process uh, that we follow for us to be able to prepare a weight mount. Yeah. So now, we are going to get our specimen from the scale leaf, which I showed you earlier. So we'll be able to cut a small piece from here, and we'll be able to get from that small piece that we're going to cut uh, on the uh, upper epidermis of the scaly leaf. The upper epidermis is the inner cave of your scaly leaf of onion. Uh, so there is a skin which you can easily peel off and that is the one we are going to use uh, to observe cells under a microscope. So let me simply cut using a scalpel. have a piece which we can use 
the right size which we can use on our uh, specimen slide. So using a faucet or a tweezer or simply your fingers. If you are using your fingers, simply use the thumb and the forefinger to peel off a skin from the inner cave of the scale leaf. If you are using a tweezer or a faucet, you simply ensure that you hold the skin. You can use your fingers to simply remove part of it and then hold the skin using the tweezer and then peel so that you have a structure like that one. So if you are able to see that structure, that is a skin that we have obtained from the, uh, the scale leaf of onion. Then you place this on the glass slide. It must lie very flat on the glass slide. So you stick it there. You can use your fingers to ensure that it is as flat as possible. So when you are certain that it is flat enough, this specimen, uh, you are going to add a drop of water on it. Because remember, we are preparing a wet mount. So we are going to add a drop of water. So I have water, which I'm going to use here. So add a drop, one drop of water. That. And then get a cover slip. Uh, you can use just your fingers to place the cover slip at about 45 degrees to the specimen slide on which the specimen is. So the idea is to try and drive off the water uh, slowly without causing bubbles of gas being trapped on the specimen. So you place it there and you lower it slowly and carefully until it lies flat on top of the specimen. So once that is achieved, then the next step is what is called staining. So we are going to stain the specimen so that the cells are visible. Uh, there are certain details of the cell that we need to see under a microscope. For example, the nucleus. For it to be very visible, you need to stain it. And the staining solution we use is iodine solution which I showed you earlier. So iodine solution, we are going to use to stain it. So how are we going to add iodine solution? Since we have covered with the cover slip here, we are going to put a drop of iodine solution on one edge of the cover slip, which is on the specimen, which means that this solution will now be able to move towards or over the specimen. Then on the other side here, we are going to use a paper towel which we are going to place just on the edge for it to be able to suck both the water and the iodine solution. So by it sucking, it will help actually the iodine solution to pass over the specimen so that it is stained. And the, in that way, we are going to have a clear view when we observe under a microscope. So open have a dropper there, so I'll put a drop on one edge, like I indicated, then a drop of iodine solution, then using a paper towel, I'm going to place the edge there, so that it begins to absorb the water. You can see the water and the iodine solution are being absorbed, so once I'm satisfied that enough of it has been absorbed, and the specimen is well stained, it means that I have finished preparing a specimen which I can use for viewing under a microscope. So the next step, you remove this and discard it correctly in the correct place, in the bin. Then the slide that we have prepared can now be placed on the stage. So our next part we are going to look at how we can mount a, a specimen uh, which is on the slide onto the uh, 
microscope stage so that we are able to view the cells. That will be our next stage. Now let me take you through the steps you will be able to follow for you to be able to mount the uh, specimen onto the stage of the microscope and uh, also up to the time you should be able to get the image, you will be able to view the image of the specimen uh, in the eyepieces. So the first step that you need to do is first of all you lower the stage to its lowest point using the cost adjusting norm. So remember what we said last time under the parts of the microscope. We said that the cost adjusting knob is this knob here. So by me turning it, I should be able to observe the stage descending, going downwards. So until it has moved to the lowest point, okay? if it has moved to the lowest point, I leave it there. Then the next step is for me to place the specimen onto the stage. So the specimen we prepared it earlier. This is the one here. So you now remember last time we talked about the stage having what we call stage clips. So you have a stage clip here and then there's a fixed point on the other side here. So the stage clip you open it and you place your slide in position like that and then release slowly so that you don't break the slide. It is glass, it can easily break, so you have to take great care as you are placing the, the glass slide onto the stage. So you have now done or you have positioned your uh, specimen onto the stage. All you need to check is is it in correct position. Before you can do that, first of all, turn on the microscope. Okay, for this one, which is using electricity, you have a button just here, turn it on. For those that are using a mirror, you turn, you sit near a window like I'm doing, then you ensure that it is set at an angle that it is reflecting light from the window onto the stage. Then you'll be able to see um, through the eyepiece lenses. Okay, now when you have turned on, the microscope or you have set the uh, mirror so that it is able to reflect light to the stage. The next part is to select the lens, the objective lens you are going to use. So the first lens that you should use when you are observing under a microscope is the lens that has magnifying power of 10. So meaning that this lens is going to magnify the size of the specimen, the image of the specimen 10 times. So the number of times it is going to magnify is 10 times. The eyepiece lenses, uh, these I'm having here, they have magnification of 10 times as well. So, I have this lens here, I have this lens here, which is the one having magnifying power of 10. So I use the rotating nose piece, to turn so that I place that lens in position. Once it is in position, then I will raise the stage. Why I'm, I'm, I'm raising the stage up without looking through the eyepiece lenses? So I have to observe on the stage. As I'm raising the, the stage upwards uh, to levels where, to a level where it does not come into contact with the lens. Uh, which we are going to use for observing. Some lenses are longer, so as you raise the stage, you are going to find that it may get very close such that the glass specimen can become uh, you know, crushed. It can easily be broken by that impact. So you have to look and see that it is close enough as you raise the stage When you are satisfied that it is in the correct position, now you can begin to view under, uh, you can begin, begin to view through the eyepiece lenses. So you position your eyes until you are able to see the field of view. The field of view actually looks circular when you, you, 
you are observing or you are looking through the eyepieces. So it looks secular. So you see, now, when at this stage you begin to move using the course adjust knob, you move the stage downwards slowly until you begin to see the cells, until you begin to see the cells. So I'm doing that right now. Ah, at that point, I'm beginning to see the cells. So the, the, the cells are not very clear. And remember what we said last time, to make the cells clear, we have to move or to turn the uh, fine adjusting knob so that we have a clear, sharp image. So I'm going to use the fine adjusting knob to make the image so fine, clear. Yeah, just there. So it means that now you are able to see the, the cells clearly. You may be required to draw the cells and if you are required to draw the cells, normally the number of cells you can draw, you may not draw all of them because there are too many. So you, you can only draw three cells or two cells. Um, that is the most recommended is actually drawing maximum of three cells out of the many because the structure is the same of, of the cells as you are able to see from your screen. We have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe. Uh, you will be able to receive notifications each time I post new videos. See you next time.